everyone. Welcome to day 13 of 3D printing. Now somebody reached out to me as far as doing a deep dive of supports. So let's just have at it. First thing we're gonna do is that we're not gonna look at Cura. Instead, we're gonna look at a case study of when supports are going to be helpful. So follow me on over to the camera. So here's what we got. I printed, uh, this is a gift for a friend of mine and he's got some tools of a particular brand and I want to test out these these tool mounts and they're gonna mount to the wall the six screws however the channel in which the tool slides into has what's called an overhang meaning there is 3d printed material that is overhanging and not supported by the print uh, design already so what we do is we print this support layer that snaps out now, if you followed along my other videos, we, I did talk about these tools already, and man, these are just wicked awesome. I can't tell you how many times I have always been frustrated with a 3D print, and I just can't seem to get these supports to snap out well. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's, let's just take this, this little tool, wiggles in just nice, and pops out. I can't tell you how clean of a pop out that is frustratingly trying to break away supports with tools that aren't designed for it. So this little mini spatula toolkit specifically for 3D printing, kind of looks like some dentist tools, um, have been super helpful when breaking away supports. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the second one. And then let's, let me get in there just a little bit more. Break it away a little bit. Coming in with a thicker one. And there we go and our support is completely broken away. All right, now that could do with a little bit of cleanup on the end, but overall, this part is ready to roll. This support stuff, we can throw away, you can recycle, but this is what our design is overall. Now let's hop on over to Cura. How do we use supports and how do we manage them? All right, now that everything cleared out of the way to walk through Cura, let's do that. So I've got four different designs here. One is I'm gonna call a pretty simplistic design. It's gonna require no supports. And that is this paint uh, dry holder. So these little stands you can uh, hang up for if you're standing or painting a project. These little feet, you get three or four of them, put your piece on it. Um, these are super awesome. More video on this later. But I would consider this a level one print because it does not require any supports. As you can see, even though there is some 3D geometry, none of it is actually overhanging. Everything is vertically stacked on one another. So if I look down one rail of our triangle, everything looks vertically stacked. The kind of next level print is the thing we already looked at is this tool holder, which does have this overhang. And you see that Cura denotes the overhang with highlighting that face in red meaning that there is something here overhanging, you it might want to bring your attention to it. I would say as far as the next level of complication could be something we already printed earlier was the front dial for our phone. Now I did talk a little bit about how I was able to print it on its nose, but notice how the overhang here is a circular face. Let me just delete this for right now. How this is a circular face as opposed to this being a rectangular face. When it comes to prints and supports, you might be able to get away with a circle. And I'll show you kind of what I mean here in a second. So this is kind of level of complexity. We got level one, level two, level three. And then we have this really cool wire framed cow design, which I want to try to print. Uh, but here's the problem is that there are some internal faces for supports. So when we have generate support everywhere and hit slice, I run into a problem with this print right here is because there's going to be supports on the inside that are going to be really difficult to break away. Uh, and so I would say this is probably a limitation of Cura. There are other slicing softwares out there that have a whole lot more buttons to them, but they're also more complex. And one of those things you can do is to manually adjust where your support layers are at. If you're watching this video, that's probably not for you anyways. But Let's just show what these support layers look like in each of these. Now, I know my computer's going to bog down a little bit because we got uh, 
We got this running and we got Kira running. So just bear with me. But as we can tell, if I go all the way down to the first layer, if we look at this first part here, as I go up the layer line, so notice that slider on the way right, notice how none of the layers have any overhang. So there's no support needed. This is a really easy print when you're first getting started because it has a huge surface area on the bottom and it has no supports. If we hop on over to the tool, you can now see our first support layers kind of popping in. Let's go back down just a little bit. So everything is as normal with the first print until we get to that overhang layer. And you notice that there is a difference in the pattern of the print. So the infill density is a triangular pattern, but this snap away support layer is this rectangular pattern, which is really, really easy to pop away. So if I continue scrolling up, now you can see this is the part let me go down just a little bit more. This is the part that we popped away. Okay. And then the rest kind of prints as normal. Or things get a little bit interesting. So if you've gotten the rectangular supports, kind of you're feeling good. Or things get a little bit different is when it comes to circular supports. So notice how when we first printing this that there are no supports attached to the side walls of the cylinder that's because the overhang is under 35 degrees so by default we have 35 degrees set right now so anything that has an overhang of 35 degrees or more is going to generate that support with it if it has less than 35 it won't print a support layer. Now, as a general rule of thumb, you can get away with anywhere from 45 up to 60% if you really got your, your printer dialed in. However, I would say for me, I just tend to stick on the realm of 45 degrees because the majority of things that I print aren't necessarily, I'm concerned with supports uh, and I'm not really making anything that is along the lines of artistic. Most things I print tend to be functional rather than have some artistic or creative content value to it. Now, here is where kind of the limitations of Cura takes off and supports is this cow. So if you are looking into getting into the world of 3D printing, when it comes to let me go ahead and just uh, adjust a couple of things. When it comes to, let's do line type. Let's take the travelers out of there. And let's look at just what we have as far as supports. Everything that is blue for this cow is a support. That is a lot of material to break away. If you have a really high quality printer, you might be able to get away with going to a more complex slicer setting and removing the unnecessary supports that are needed. But like I said, if this if you're watching this video, that probably isn't for you. So I'm, I'm just kind of wanting to show you where the limitations of the Ender 3 starts at and where things tend to get a little bit complicated. Uh, I tend to have students walking in and go, I want to print this, and I'm like, well, we got to understand how 3D printer works first before you can try to, to bite onto something that is towards the realm of impossible with an Ender 3. Okay, but as long as you are starting to tinker with it and get to understand, general rule of thumb when it comes to my settings, or at least settings for my students when we're starting out, generate support everywhere and give it an angle of 45 degrees. When you do that, it really, really bumps down your chances of failure. And most things, like the circular, the circular opening on the dial front, won't be wasting much support at all. Now, I'm going to go with this general rule of thumb. Until you are very, very, very comfortable with supports and not needing them or when to need them, it is better and more successful 
to have one print with supports with a little bit of waste than to have multiple prints with multiple failures. You're welcome to and to try to build your skill and your ability, but until you get comfortable with what you can do, try not to focus on what you can't do yet and then see if you can get away with it. So I went ahead and bumped it up to 45 degrees and notice how this support layer on this area didn't change at all because this is a 90 degree overhang. And then notice how the support area for over here changed a little bit and this column isn't as wide anymore. That's because it's only supporting where the circle starts to get an overhang of above 45 degrees. Okay, I hope that was enough of a deep dive video for supports. If you have any questions, feel free to go in the comment section. Um, and until then, I will